Hello and welcome to Payne Hall. My name is Andy Clark, Director of Choral Activities at Harvard and conductor of the Harvard Glee Club beginning my ninth year here in Cambridge. I'm joined by my friend and colleague Nathan Reef, the resident conductor of the Harvard Glee Club beginning his second year with the group. Why don't we talk a little bit about what's going to come up this fall with the Princeton concert, which I'm really excited about. And sort of a, as has been tradition uh, with us, we really don't have like a particular hegemonic theme um, to our set list for the football concerts. We've got pieces from the Renaissance. We have things from chant all the way on up to works for six and eight uh, parts. Um, some pieces that have just been premiered here in the last few months. Um, I think what we really try and do with all of the groups is to provide as broad an experience as possible to the rich um, repertory for men's chorus. And uh, in this way, <clears throat> we're also thinking didactically. Um, we pick pieces in the beginning of the year, not just thinking of what audiences might enjoy or what the students might really sink their teeth into, but what is the music that is actually going to help build our skills? But even, even in spite of the fact that it's sort of been a hodgepodge of different pieces, it's very interesting that almost coincidentally um, that some different themes have kind of percolated to the service. So for instance, uh, we have two pieces that invoke the rich tradition of the American shape note hymnody, particularly the sacred harp tradition of the 19th century, the wonderful shape note uh, singing that's such a part of the um, of America, that sort of, the, I would call it the trunk of the tree of American music in many ways. We are also taking some time with all three groups, and particularly with the Glee Club this year, to mark the bicentennial of the great American poet Walt Whitman. Walt Whitman, um, this coming May, um, will be the bicentennial of the birth of Walt Whitman. And uh, in this particular fall concert set, we have, I think we have two separate Whitman settings. Mm -hmm. A setting we did a few years ago um, from a work Ned Roram wrote um, called the Whitman Cantata, uh, setting his poem, that, um, that Shadow, My Likeness, um, that wanders to and fro. It's a beautiful poem, actually, that sort of speaks to finding oneself um, in a moment of questioning, in a moment of uncertainty by being with one's friends and comrades singing together. The other Whitman setting we have is his well-known Civil War poem, Reconciliation. Um, you find this poem in the Vaughn Williams' Dona Nobis Pachin and other pieces. And this is a wonderful work for tenor bass choir by Stephen Chapman. Um, we happen to have two pieces for flugelhorn. I think we've covered all of the pieces in the <laughs> tenor bass <laughs> repertoire for flugelhorn. Probably. <laughs> so if there are any alums or friends out there who do play the flugelhorn, let us know because we're on the lookout for a flugelhorn player. Um, we also have, have a, a set of pieces that really, um, that really actually sort of re reflect upon human mortality. Um, and thinking a little bit about uh, the way in which choral music actually, so many different ways, not just with requiems and threnodies, but thinking about what it means to learn how to die, what it means to actually confront um, our own mortality and the mortality of the people that we love. And um, I'm really excited about a work uh, that we're performing by the Massachusetts composer Lewis Spratlin. Professor Spratlin taught for years uh, at Amherst, won the Pulitzer Prize um, for an opera that he wrote, I think about 15 years ago or so. And he has this piece called New England Concordance. And the first movement is called Thoreau's Flute. And it's actually a poem that Louisa May Alcott um, wrote in the Atlantic right after Thoreau dies. And it's just a profound sort of um, tribute to her friend. And we're both big, big fans of Lou Spratlin's choral music. And we have a, a kind of an ambition, a hope, to over the course of three or four years actually make a CD of his choral music. A lot of his, his pieces actually have not been recorded. And so there are wonderful pieces for mixed choir or treble women's chorus and also pieces a couple really amazing pieces that we hope the Glee Club can not only perform but record. I think we're going to end our set, of course, before the football songs. We hope to see many of you on <laughs> stage with us, both in Richardson Auditorium and here in Sanders Theater the night before the Yale game. But we're going to end our set um, not only with Glorious Apollo, but with a few other pieces. 
the Ned Roram piece I referred to earlier, and another work that really just sort of speaks to the power of music to bring people together, and almost music as just sort of a salvation, particularly in trying and troubling times. 